Hey YouTube, I am your favorite nurse B, and today I want to talk about everything that I did not learn while I was in nursing school, honey. It was, yeah, I want my money back. <laughs> All right, let's get right into it. First things first, if you haven't already seen my second channel, Stay Forever True, go check that out. It's more about my lifestyle. Uh, I do hair videos, health and beauty videos, and also I have a lot of videos about uh, my daughter. I just had a daughter, yay! Um, so definitely go check that out. Also, you can check out my Instagram, Finding Earth. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Basically, I talk about everything from being a CNA up until me being a nurse and everything in between. All right, y'all. So here's what I did not learn in nursing school. So just so you all know, I am an LPN. I went to a technical school for a year to become an LPN. And that's that. First thing I did not learn is talking to families. So um we never really did any scenario we didn't do anything as far as we didn't even talk about talking to family members or uh power of attorneys anything like that um so basically um you know when there's something going on with somebody if that person is not their durable power of attorney or they're not considered like their responsible party you don't have to tell them anything if the patient themselves is their own responsible party if their daughter comes and is like oh i know i saw that mom has some some lab work done yesterday can you tell me what that looks like if you look at their chart and you see that they have that that person is not considered their uh, power of attorney you don't have to tell them anything you can say you know i cannot get the information and you can ask your mom about it and keep on moving but they don't tell you about that in school like, they don't tell you like i mean they kind of talk about hipaa you know, keeping the patient's information, you know, confidential, but they don't really go into detail as to how you deal with family members. How do you deal with, you know, somebody, it's been some crazy scenarios with families and I can do a lot of videos on that, but just how do you deal with a family member that say comes in and they are screaming and yelling at you that about, you know, their mom didn't get this or their dad didn't get that. Or I talked to the other nurse the other day and she said she was going to take care of it you know what 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 are you all doing up here da, 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 da. like how do you deal with that they never talk about that um and i think that that's something that people fall short on when it comes to nursing is being able to communicate with family members and um doing it in a professional way doing it in a very you know thoughtful way you have to be thoughtful when you talk to other people's families because they're already in a state of like either it be they're confused about something they're afraid uh they're just already crazy to begin with i know some people hate when i say stuff like family members are crazy da, 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 but i'm just telling y'all the truth i mean i'm just telling y'all the truth some people are just crazy whether you're a nurse or not some people are crazy like and of course i'm not going to treat them like they're crazy i'm going to take you know take care of them and give them information that i can give them but let's just be honest people are crazy just because i'm a nurse doesn't mean I can't say that people are crazy or that people say stupid things or ask stupid things. To them, it might not be stupid, but to me, I'm like, this is just, why are you asking me this? But at the end of the day, I'm not going to treat you that way. I'm just telling y'all how sometimes, you know, you feel about a situation. I'm just being honest, okay? <laughs> like it or love it, it is what it is. But yeah, they don't, they don't teach you how to talk to family members. Um, and I will do a video on that. Um, just how do you communicate with families? Just the best ways to um to just deal with it and to give them the right information and to be as you know thoughtful and compassionate as possible um the second thing that they'll teach you about is how to talk to doctors which i have another video already posted about how to talk to nds because i know a lot of people are afraid to talk to doctors and they don't know what to say or you know they've had bad experiences so i do have a video on that so check that out i'll leave the link in the description box um but to be honest y'all like I remember in nursing school, they were like, oh, when you get the lab, you have to let the doctor know. I'm like, wait, what? I was like, we had to tell them. They don't know already. They say, no, you have to be the one that conveys this to the doctor. And I was like, oh, I had no. And this was like the end of nursing school. <laughs> I was like, what? Why can't they look up their own stuff? They was like, no, you're supposed to tell them. I'm like, oh, crap. Like, what? It felt like I was a secretary. I'm like, I had to tell them, like, about labs and all that. They're like, yeah. I'm like, y'all never told us this. Like, yeah, that's. Yeah, I don't know why they don't talk about that because that's a big part of your job is communicating with doctors and of course communicating with other people that are in the field whether it be you know therapy or you're talking to dietary and you talk to them and let them know certain things or you're talking to um you know occupational therapy speech you're talking to uh, you know 
other doctors, not even just their primary, but you're calling out and maybe talking to like a specialist that they have, things like that. They don't talk about that. Um, and I don't know why. I have no idea why, but communication is key with nursing um, and being able to just have that interdisciplinary, um, just being able to communicate and work with other branches of healthcare other than just you being a nurse. Um, the fourth thing, the third thing I would say that they don't talk about is, or that you don't learn about is how to manage your time. Now, I mean, you're kind of sort of dealing with manage your time, managing your time in nursing school because they put so much on you. Like as far as you got to have this test this day, you got to read all these chapters by this day. You have to do this, da, 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 you got to do this, you got to do that. You kind of deal with time management, but they never teach you how to manage your time as a nurse how to prioritize like I'm sure maybe more so in RN you deal with prioritizing like kind of like triaging people like which patient do you see first blah 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 but sometimes it, it's hard like you have to it's definitely something that you have to keep like in your mind like okay I gotta give her a pill he's complaining of pain she has um you know the the ages told me that such and such has redness and swelling to her foot okay and I'm waiting on a doctor to call me and, um, I don't know, something like this patient just threw up. Like, so what the heck? Like, I don't even know where to start. You don't really, I mean, you, you might have a test question about, oh, who do you see first? Da, 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 da. But like actually going through these scenarios and actually having things kind of come at you and being more like realistic, you don't go over that in nursing school, not even in clinicals. And I feel like they should implement it more in clinicals like you know this is your patient today and this person is your mock patient like they when you're in clinicals and nursing school they give you one patient typically maybe two and you know you get to spend that whole time with that one patient doing everything for that one patient learning all their medications and their diseases and all that good stuff but as far as being able to manage a patient load like at my job i could have anywhere from 25 to 50 patients and that's a whole hell of a lot <laughs> compared to one and then on top of that you're supervising people as a nurse well at least at my job as a charge nurse i'm supervising maybe four to five maybe six even seven people are under me that i'm supervising so it's a lot to consider and everything that i'm talking about in this video as far as what i didn't learn in nursing school i will elaborate more on it in separate videos and tell you all like um how to deal with it and how to be your best at it, like with time management. So the last thing that I did not learn, we went over it. I'm not going to lie. We went over it. They gave us like this little special training and all this. They had somebody come in and teach us certain things. Give us a little booklet. But yeah, conflict, conflict, conflict. Dealing, like being in charge, dealing with conflict between you know maybe your cnas are having issues together i mean um amongst themselves or cna or cmts have an issue with you or you get into it with another nurse which it happens it happens or you know maybe it could be just you and the doctor getting into it that happens i have seen it happen yes yes i have seen it like how do you deal with that how do you deal with that that tension at work how do you tell somebody to do something how do you um how do you supervise somebody that's something that's very very hard i think to teach and to grasp um i still haven't perfected it especially you know be, me being young me being i really feel like me being a young black female it makes it harder for me for people to be like take me seriously i guess or to feel like you know i'm their supervisor they have they kind of have an issue with that I think but at the end of the day I lead by example that's how person I am I'm just gonna jump in and do the work and I'm a pretty much I feel like I'm pretty much gonna I wouldn't say like guilt you into doing your job but I'll I'm gonna show you I can do your job and my job and do it better and and you're gonna be like dang you know <laughs> but I don't I don't try to do it like that I just try to do whatever needs to be done like I, I'm not gonna keep waiting on you to do something like if I can do it I'm gonna try my best to get in there and do it because I'm there to do what I need to do for my patient like I don't want to play any games with you, but that's not the best way to do things. You know, sometimes you have to just delegate and say, I need you to do this. I need you to do it by this time. Thank you. And leave it at that. And some people, it just comes to them naturally. Some people, they can just, you know, get in and lead or get in and be more authoritative. Um, and it just, it gets done. 
Um, but like I said, it's something I'm working on myself. But in school, like you don't really deal with it. And I think that's a lot of reasons why people get so burnt out with nursing is because you have to supervise other people. Um, and it sucks. It really does. <laughs> so yes, those are the things I did not learn in nursing school. Um, as far as like actual clinical things I didn't learn, I would say that I was I felt really confident clinically, um, but it's just that I feel like we should have did a little bit more scenarios. So certain, just, I mean, you learn the disease process, you learn certain medications, and but it's like actually applying that um, isn't always seen easily in nursing school. They don't always apply the knowledge that you have easily, even in clinicals. You would think that Clinicals is the whole the whole point of that is for you to take your knowledge and apply it to something to a real life person and then for you to actually, you know, follow through on certain things. But it's not I don't it didn't really come across easily or it didn't come across at all in clinicals. So for example, you know, okay, you got this patient, this is what she's looking like. What um like with the patient I say, you got a patient who whose foot is red and it's swollen, okay. What's the first thing you think it might be going on with this patient? What type of questions are you going to ask that patient? Um, what type of information are you going to get from that patient? What are you going to ask the doctor for? Um, what do you think is going on with them? What nursing interventions are you going to do for that patient? Um, like, so for example, um, a person has a red swollen, the foot is uh, red and it's swollen. Okay, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to ask the patient, how long has this been going on? Oh, it's been like for two days. Okay. Does it hurt? Yes, it has pain. Okay, when do you usually feel pain? Is it all the time or is it just when you walk on it? Da, 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 da. Um, it's pretty much all the time. It hurts. Okay, what type of pain? Like what level of pain is that? Okay, it's about a five out of ten. Okay, have you has anybody given you anything for pain for this? Do you want something for pain? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, let's check her vital signs. Okay, everything's cool, but she does have an elevated temp. It's about um or a low grade temp, it's like ninety nine point eight or something like that okay i'm gonna give her some tylenol see how that works uh her other vital signs are stable um uh, let's see i'm gonna touch it oh yes it's, it hurts it's really tender when you touch it okay uh let's go ahead and elevate it because it's swollen so let's try to elevate it and see if we can reduce some of that swelling it's red okay she has elevated she has a low grade temp maybe she maybe there's some type of infection maybe there's some type of cellulitis going on with this with this foot is it both feet you're trying to compare to make sure okay about how much swelling is it? How much edema is it? So you're pushing on it. Okay, it's about a one plus pitting edema, or it's not even pitting. Just say one plus edema. Uh, it's red and it's tender. Is it warmer than the other foot? You're trying to compare. Okay, she says it's been going on for two days. She hasn't taken anything for pain except for what I just gave her. This Tylenol. All right. Tell your patient. Communicate with your patient. I'm going to talk to your doctor, see what they want to do, and then we're going to go from there. But for right now, I want you to elevate this foot. Try not to get up, but if you do need help getting up, you know, call the aid because I don't really want you walking on this with by yourself in this room. Boom. Then you go and you make a decision. Do you want to call the family or the doctor first? Which I kind of go over this in my um, how to talk to an MD video. But yeah, so you go from there. So that's certain things that you would do as a nurse, like real life. That's what I would do. But it's not, you don't go over that in nursing school, or at least I didn't go over it. Like I, like I said, I didn't even, it didn't click in my head that I had to even tell doctors um, what labs were until it was freaking the end of school. Like literally, like I think we had like a few weeks left and I was just like, what? Like I didn't, I know the sounds crazy, but I didn't even know like, I knew the roles of a nurse, but I didn't really understand like the, res the, the responsibilities of a nurse, like the actual task. Sorry, I ran out of space on my camera. Anywho, I didn't learn like the actual tasks of nursing um, while in nursing school, which I know it sounds like kind of like what, but I didn't. Um, so I would suggest perhaps when you, um, before you go into nursing school, maybe sometime while you're in nursing school, look up like a job post for a nurse, um, whatever it is you're going for, LPN, RN, whatever, and look up a job post and look at where they said like tasks and responsibilities or something like that. Print that off, look at it, read it, and kind of see if you get an idea of what that job is telling you that you're going to have to know or do. And if there's something that you're not sure about, unclear about, go to your teacher, your professors, and ask them, like, okay, I see that this is something I need to know how to do or something I need to be proficient in as a nurse. 
um, I don't really think that we went over it or I'm not really sure if we went over it. Can you kind of explain it more to me? Like, so I can feel more confident about this and then go from there. Um, I think that'd be helpful for you all. So those are the things I did not learn in nursing school. Um, overall though, I did feel really confident coming out of nursing school. A lot of things you have to just learn on the job. You have to just get in there and do it. And, um, just, you're going to be uncomfortable because you don't know anything or for the most part, you won't know anything. And, you just got to get in and do what you got to do and you'll learn it just be confident um but be humble and it'll come to you it'll come to you it really will over time it will and you're going to be a great nurse <laughs> so that's that let me know if you all like this video tell me if there's anything else specifically you want to see if you haven't already join my facebook group your fave nurse b i haven't posted a lot on there but i'm going to post more for you all and I really want you all to talk to each other and see what everybody else is doing and just to create like a community um, outside of YouTube. Thank you all for watching. Peace.